Now coming to the numerical argument which leads to an approximation of the Boltzmann distribution, uh, we will make some simple assumptions. Okay. And uh, before we start, uh, the particles that or the entities that we are talking about for the system can freely exchange energy with one another which we have discussed before and the probability of one particle acquiring a, an energy state say E0 or E1 has no bearing on another particle occupying the same energy state. So these probabilities are not related. So if, if 10 particles uh, occupy say energy, energy state E1, nothing is stopping from another two particles to occupy the same energy state. The only caveat is that these particles are occupying that energy state at the expense of the total energy of the system, right? So uh, even though they can occupy any energy state they wish, the total it is at the expense of the total energy of the system. So suppose if, uh, say, the total energy of the system is uh, say uh, say 10 delta E where delta is a is a small energy value and say if you have say uh, 11 particles of this in the system nothing is stopping from 10 particles to have an energy of 10 delta E but at that point one particle has to be at the energy state 0 because the entire energy is being taken up by these 10 particles okay so that is that is the only uh, that that is the only criteria besides that the particles can are free to take up any energy state okay <coughs> so in in our numerical argument uh, we will uh, consider a very simple uh, system with only four particles and we will also designate the energy total energy of the system to be just 3 delta E okay so that means uh, and also uh, that the particles can only acquire energy in uh, chunks of delta E so so the amount of energy that they are occupying are in chunks it is not continuous so the particles can have energy of 0 delta E 2 delta E and 3 delta E okay later on we will get a generalized uh, uh, generalized uh, expression from this if we make delta E to tend to 0. So when delta E goes to 0 means we will have a large number of energy states right and then and, and then we can we can make an make a, a calc do a calculation on uh, a large number of particles with a large number of energy states but for simplicity for simplicity purposes let us just do the approximation based on only three energy states and four particles okay so uh, let's let's move into a, a diagram here and we will so uh, I have I have drawn a diagram here uh, with what what we have talked about before so it's it's a system with uh, distinguishable energy states of 0 delta e 2 delta e 3 delta e and I've just kept it kept a 4 delta e but uh, it never goes to 4 delta e and there are four particles okay in this system now uh, as we had talked about a macro state so what are the different ways in which these four particles could distribute the energy of 3 delta E amongst themselves okay so let's see so it one distribution could be like this that is 
one particle is sitting at 3 delta E and three particles are sitting at energy level zero. So this is this is a uh, this is a uh, this state is allowed right because uh, these four particles are sharing energy amongst themselves and the total energy happens to be three delta e, right so let's see how many microstates this particular arrangement has so so this is one macro state right so we have three particles in energy level zero and one particle in energy level three delta e okay so the total number of arrangements that we can have or the total number of microstates that we can have is we, we saw we saw this situation before it's factorial 4 by factorial 3 which equals to 4 okay factorial 3 because these three particles in the same energy level the if, if these particles are rearranged within the same energy level that is not counted so that is why the factorial 3 factor underneath okay now uh, a second macro state could be two particles occupying energy level zero, one particle occupying energy level delta E and another particle occupying energy level two delta E, which also sums up to three delta E. Okay. Now, let's see how many microstates this can have. So, we can see that same as before, we can have four factorial number of ways the particles can arrange themselves however since there are two particles in energy level zero we do a factorial four over factorial two which happens to be 12 right now the third arrangement could be one particle at energy level zero and three particles at energy level delta e right so that also sums up to be 3 delta E. So the number of states or the macro states here is factorial 4 by factorial 3 again, which equals 4. Okay. Now, as we discussed before, the probability of arrangement of these particles are all the same. For example, these four microstates can occur with the same probability. That is, if this particle exchanges position with this particle or, or in any other arrangement, each of those arrangements will have the same probability. Okay? So, all these microstates will occur with the same probability. So, 20 microstates, 4 plus 4 plus 12 happens to be 20 microstates occur with the same probability so the probability for so the probability for microstate 1 or sorry the macrostate 1 is 4 upon 20 the probability for macrostate 2 is 12 upon 20 and the probability of macrostate 3 is again 4 upon 20 right so if we add these up obviously the probability is going to be 1 okay so now let's find the probable number of particles in each energy state now so let's say that is ne now since the probability of macro state 1 is 4 upon 20 and we have three particles in energy state zero, the probable number of particles for macro state one is going to be three into four upon 20. Similarly, for macro state two, the probable number of particles in energy state zero is going to be two into 12 upon 20, as the probability for this macro state is 12 upon 20. And the probability of the number of particles in macro state three is 1 into 4 upon 20. So let's see, let's calculate the total number of or probable number of particles for energy state 0 across the three macro states that we have here. Okay, so it is going to be 3 into 
4 upon 20 plus 2 into 12 upon 20 plus 1 into 4 upon 20. So that comes to 12 upon 20, just simple fractions, 24 upon 20 plus 4 upon 20. So that is that is going to be equal to 24 plus 428, 40 upon 20. So that is 2. Okay. Now let's calculate the probable number of particles in energy level delta E similar to what we did before so we just have one particle in macro state 2 and three particles in macro state 3 so let's let's do the calculation it will be 1 into 12 over 20 plus 3 into 4 over 20 okay so that that makes it 24 upon 20 6.5 so let's put it put it here it's 6 upon 5 okay now we will similarly do the calculation for 2 delta e so so we have only one particle at macro state 2 for 2 delta e so it is going to be just 12 upon 20 so let's 1 into 12 upon 20 so let's put 12 upon 20 or it, we, we could have put 3 upon 5 okay for 3 delta e the probable number of particles is 4 upon 20 into 1 again so it is 4 upon 20 so now let us add up all these numbers okay so the probable number of particles so if we add up these numbers they should add up to 4 okay so let's see 2 plus 6 upon 5 plus 3 upon 5 plus 1 upon 5 okay so that comes to 10 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1 upon 5 16 20 upon 5 so 20 upon 5 equals to 4 which means our calculation is correct okay so now let's let's plot these number of particles against the energy states that is 0 delta e 2 delta e 3 delta e and 4 delta e and actually we saw this graph before so if you see this graph that we had plotted previously this is actually the distribution graph for what we saw okay so if you plot those points on on over here okay those four points you will you are going to roughly get this kind of a curve okay which is a decreasing exponential curve however uh, the general argument will actually prove for good that it is indeed a decreasing exponential curve but that is what it is so if the points are plotted here uh, or say say we have uh, uh, a large number of energy states here not delta e 2 delta e in a large number of particles close to each other it is going to come to an exponential curve so a general uh, equation for an uh, exponential graph okay uh, is is going to exponential curve is going to look like this okay so uh, we can say that uh, the general equation will will look like this say uh, i we can say it is n e equals a which is a constant e to the power of 
minus e upon e0 which happens to be an exponential function so if we are just a and e0 properly we are going to get a uh, best fit of the curve which will represent the results of our calculation okay so it, this it's going to be this but we don't know for sure uh, the general argument is as, as we stated the general argument is going to prove for good that it, this is indeed an exponential curve 